trapezoid is a quadrilateral, that's a four-sided figure, with at least one set of parallel sides. All right, today we have some volunteers here, and we have told the volunteers the definition of a trapezoid. Now, I'm going to hand the young lady a pink chalk, and I'm going to hand the young man a blue chalk, and I'm going to step back, and they are going to try and draw a trapezoid based just upon the definition. Four-sided figure, at least one set of parallel sides. Side two. Four-sided figure, one set of parallel sides. Oh, I love it. Thank you. Yes. Now have the chalk. Nice job. You may take the bow. Nice yes. Job. All right. I'm just about to say, you guys can sit down, you're wonderful. I am so glad that this happened because we got two different kinds of trapezoids. Let's take a look at the young ladies first. This is the pink one. We do have four sides, and we can tell that she meant for these two sides to be parallel. Now, in mathematics, we have a little symbol that indicates that, and that is the arrowhead. If you see a single arrowhead on two segments in a polygon, that means they were meant to be par parallel. Even if it was drawn freehand and they're not real perfect, they were meant to be parallel. Now, obviously, these two sides are not. So this is your classic trapezoid. Now, over here, the young man, he did something very, very interesting. He did draw a trapezoid. But his does not have just one set of parallel sides. His has two. And the way we indicate that symbolically is with the two arrowheads on the sides and the one arrowhead here. So you can see these two are parallel and these two are parallel. Now, his drawing does fit the criteria for the definition. You want to go ahead and put the definition again. All you have to have is four sides and at least one set of parallel sides. So the young man's here, yes. It has two sets, so it fits the, the criteria. In fact, what he has drawn here is a parallelogram, and we know its area is just base times height. We have already done problems like this. So I can erase this, and we will go ahead and take a look at the young ladies. Now, it's extremely important that you remember these slanted sides don't mean anything. They are not the height of the, uh, the trapezoid. To get a height, we're going to have to draw a perpendicular between the two parallel sides. Got to make sure we have a 90 degree angle. That's going to be very important. All right. Now I've gone ahead and I've cut a trapezoid like the young lady drew. And I made it orange so that it would show up a little bit better for the video. And on this, we have drawn the height in with the dotted segment perpendicular between the two parallel bases. Now the thing I want to really point out to you here is this. <clears throat> with the trapezoid, your bases are different lengths, so you can't call them both B like we did with the parallelogram. I always call the bottom one B and the top one A. Okay? All right, now. We're going to go ahead and do a little bit like we did with the triangles. We're going to do some twisting and some turning. But I'm going to trace the original trapezoid first. And then when I lift this, I'll put the height in. Okay, there's the height. And we'll call it H. All right, now if I come back here and do what we did similarly to what we did yesterday with the triangles, the twisting and the turning, if I go ahead and recreate the trapezoid upside down and right beside the original trapezoid, now by George, the A's down here and the B's up here, and we still have the same height. So what figure did I create? Is here. A rhombus? No, I'm sorry. It's not a rhombus. Oh, I don't mean that. I meant a polygon. It begins with P. Parallelogram. Parallelogram. Beautiful, sweetie. Okay. So this whole area here would be equal to base times height, right? The only thing is, how long is the base of the parallelogram? It's not just B now, is it? It's B, B plus A. A. You're absolutely correct. 
So we have to write it like, I'm going to write it A plus B. I'll put it in alphabetical order. And then you just simply multiply by the height. Now that would give me the area of the entire parallelogram, right? But I don't want the area of the whole parallelogram. What portion of the parallelogram do I want? Half. Yes, I just want the, sh the shaded half. So you come over here and you put in a half. Now, you can write A sub trapezoid. The area of any trapezoid is always one half it's times the two up. bases added together times the height. The teacher it every be single time. Two plus two and crazy formulas. You'll be going.